Good evening, Hyperspinners. Today we're going to be talking about how to program your buttons on your arcade cabinet using an iPack software, so get ready. So here's my board. You can see everything's wired up nicely. You can see the little slots have uh, different assignments, uh, SW if you will. Uh, on each one of those wires and that's essentially what we're going to be mapping. Uh, we're going to be looking at each one of these wires and how they connect to the uh, buttons there. Uh, each one of those buttons are assigned in SW. Uh, the spinner itself is essentially connected to this other uh, board here which you don't need to worry about that. That is a totally different uh, setup there and uh, yeah we're just going to be looking through uh, you know, these buttons and getting these assigned. So I hope uh, this helps you guys. Uh, so let's get started. All right, guys. So once you have wired up your, essentially your board uh, to your uh, arcade buttons, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna download uh, some software and you'll find that at ultimark.com. Now I'm sure there's more than one way to slice this pie, but this is the way that I did it and essentially what you're going to be doing is making your uh, arcade buttons basically press a keystroke on your keyboard so you know maybe my button one is you know letter h uh, whatever you've been basically assigning or choose to assign your uh, arcade buttons and your you know, just your, your controllers in general you're going to want to make sure that you have a uniform setup so um, you know there's no wrong way to do this. It's just you you want to be basically consistent throughout. Uh, so you can ultimately use any controller or a keyboard or your uh, arcade cabinet uh, to have your configurations control the games. So what I recommend is if you have a joy to key set up already, uh, basically that's the program that will allow you to uh, use any controller and it presses keystrokes. Uh, whatever those keys are, you'll want to also use on your arcade cabinet as well, so everything's uniform. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do is go to ultimark.com slash downloads, and you're going to find there's a number of things here. Uh, you know, if you've got a Mac, there's a Mac version as well at the bottom here, uh, but I have a Windows PC, so our options are here. So. Uh, one thing you want to check is the board uh, that you have. Uh, this is the 2015 to 2016 boards only. Uh, that is that download, so it's going to look a little different depending on the board that you have. I have a pre-2015 board, so I'm going to go ahead and click, uh, you know, this link here. So uh, the plan is, is eventually I'm going to uh, convert my buttons to an LED blinky setup, which will ultimately use the ultimate uh, I.O. board here uh, that they support and I'll do another tutorial on that once that uh, comes around and that will be coming soon. So what I'm going to do is open up this pre-2015 board and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. Here's basically a snapshot of what we're going to be talking about. There's documentation. It's well documented uh, but if you're like me you like to see things visual so I'm I'm here to help you guys out. So you're going to click this download program button. Uh, note the Windows 7 uh, note here, just running as admin. And there's nothing else that needs to be done here. So, you know, if you have a Mac, there is a Mac version as well. So you can go ahead and pick that up. And what you're going to want to do is just install that wherever. Uh, essentially, you're just unzipping it, uh, you know, when you've downloaded it. And you're going to see two folders. This default is basically my setup that I've saved. And I have no problem uh, putting that on the FTP, you know, as an example, if you'd like. And the win IPAC is the XE that we care about. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And what you're going to see is something that looks like this. Um, it's going to depend on the number of buttons that you have. And, you know, based on the, the buttons that you've wired, what you're going to do is you're going to click on this options button and you're going to select the number of you know basically inputs that you have on here i've got 28 here so we're essentially looking at the buttons here um, 
so you can kind of think through the direction pads as well as buttons and uh, yeah that's that's essentially just what your board can handle so if you've got 56 outputs you'll use that if you've got 32 you'll use that so uh, I've got 28 here basically I've got essentially seven buttons on player one and player two and and then I've got some admin buttons uh, that you see here so that is what the options uh, button is all about that is where you're gonna start and you're gonna use USB as the radio button below and you'll hit OK and if you choose, you know, 56 or 32, you'll just end up having more buttons displayed here. Uh, that's all that will, uh, or less buttons. That's all there is. So a couple things to note is when you actually go and assign these buttons. So I'm going to push the first button on the player one side. You can see it turns blue, so that's just a way to test. You can also use this little doohickey up here, the... Uh, hand icon to go to test mode and that just shows you that it reads the uh, button itself. So uh, to actually add these uh, you can essentially just click the button itself and then uh, you know change the control keys. Uh, what I tend to like to do is I go to table view so off to the left here in the pane you've got panel view which is what we're looking at and then you've got table view and this is just showing you each one of those specific uh, uh, slots on your your board. So what you're going to want to do is just look at how your motherboard is wired. And you're going to follow those wires underneath your cabinet and determine that, okay, the SW6 is this button on my cabinet. What should I you know, essentially push for my keystroke? What do I want to assign it to? So you can essentially click on any of these uh, buttons and then you can uh, map it by just pushing the button on your keyboard. And that's really it. So you can see that, you know, player one, I've mapped up, down, left, right. And then I've got you know, SW1, so slot one on the board. I want to be seven. And these are essentially my first player buttons, um, seven through Z here. Uh, this SW6 and SW7, that's essentially my volume up and down, uh, you know, button on my cabinet. And the seventh button here for player one is here. Uh, we've got the standard start and coin, which is one and five. And then player two buttons are just below that. So RFDG, I feel like these buttons are essentially standard. You know, you can ultimately have whatever you want on here, but that's, uh, I try to stick as consistent as possible. Uh, a, A, S, Q, W, I, K. Those are the other six buttons for player two. I use escape as an admin button. Uh, something to note in Rocket Launcher, uh, especially uh, escape doesn't always close out emulators. You'll want to use a combination of keys. And what I've done is uh, I use essentially uh, player one start and player one select uh, together in a combination that will also quit a program. Uh, you can probably create a, a macro that uh, assigns that to a specific key, uh, which is down below. I didn't uh, tend to do that, but you know, you can certainly do so. Uh, I also have player two start and select. Uh, if I push that at the same time, it will close the program as well. So that's really all there is to it. You can see that the shift uh, keys are in the blue. So if I wanted to have like capital D or lowercase d, um, you know, I, I could do that if I wanted to. But uh, to me, that's a little overkill. But, you know, you might, uh, you know, want to do that. It's totally up to you. Uh, so, yeah, once you fill out the green uh, buttons here, you will be up and ready to go. And you can click view uh, user text if you wanted to basically like nickname some of these fields. Uh, I didn't find any use for them because you know you're never going to look at this again until uh, you know you want to change some of these uh, buttons here. So if I click on the panel view again down at the bottom here, you're going to see all the buttons that you've selected. Uh, again, you can change these buttons in either view. It's just you know what do you uh, you know enjoy you know the most here i felt like this view was a little harder to program just because you didn't know what you were dealing with like you didn't know like what slot uh you know is what 
but it, I guess it just depends on how you program or wire your buttons into the motherboard. So yeah, that's that's really all there is to it. I think there's a way to yeah define macros. So edit define macros. I didn't do this, but I'm sure you could. So this is essentially where you could say, you know, if I push this button, it's going to uh, assign maybe two keys. Maybe that, you know, player one start and player two, uh, you know, start might shut down, uh, uh, you know, an emulator. Uh, you can essentially program that and you would just, you know, select that uh, one of the gray, you know, buttons here and you would press those uh, keys that you wanted. Um, what else might be interesting here? So we've talked about options. Uh, really, you don't want to use this firmware upgrade. Uh, so as you can see, it says MK2 boards only. If you choose to do a firm up, firmware upgrade that's not MK, uh, K2 uh, compatible, uh, I think you'll ultimately fry your board. So just kind of be careful of that. <laughs> uh, just a heads up. Uh, so just, you know, don't play around with these uh, <laughs> options at the top here because we're really just worried about uh, these these buttons here. So once you think that things are looking good, go ahead and hit File, Save As, and that's what this default IPC is. And yeah, that's all there is to it. So once you're done, you just push Program, and once you've done that, it will instantly flash these buttons to your motherboard and it will just remember your keys. So, uh, you know, keep things uniform. So you can ultimately use your arcade panel. You can use Joy2 key. So any controllers uh, and your keyboard itself, if you've got everything mapped the same, so you're using the same sort of letters for everything, then you map your emulators with the same sort of keys and you are in business. So uh, that's all there is to it for the, uh, you know, assigning your control panel. I, I will do a, another update to the, you know, the, the program ability of this when I get LED blinky going. So uh, I will catch you next time and I hope that helps.